Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sue. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to configure a REST connector, how to integrate data with external data source. This has always been a confusing topic for me, and that's why I wanted to create this video and to share my knowledge with you. Hopefully at the end of the video, you should be able to create a user face looks like similar like this, where user can type a movie name. Um, let's say Godzilla versus Kong, because I just watched it yesterday. It was really good. So you type in that, you will be able to see, did I type it wrong? Yep, I typed it wrong. You will be able to see the overview, release date, and the uh, average vote. Also, if you want to view all the name about Godzilla, let's do that. And there we go. It gives you every movie, like all the details about every movie about Godzilla. So if you are interested in how I do that, let's go ahead and uh, keep watching. In order to access the movie database, you will need to go to the moviedb.org and create an account. All you need to do is to provide a valid email address. And once you have an account, you can go to your setting. And you see here, uh, edit profile, we don't care about that, any of that. So all you're looking for is the API. Once you click it, you will see your API key is here. And remember that key, this is what we're going to use in the when we configure a REST connector. Now let's go to our Pega Dev Studio and um, create a connector. So in order to create a connector, we want to go to configure and integration connectors. Um, it's going to be a REST integration. So click that. Give it a name. I'm just going to go, go ahead and name it movie database. And endpoint URL is now depending on the endpoint URL, you will need to add the resource path or the um, query string parameter. But in this case, we are not going to change any of the any of this parameter. You know, if you select three, it will just add a bracket means later on user will insert a different value to this thing in this bracket but in our case we don't need that this is a set so let's not worry about this parameter what we need to do is to add the api key to this end parameter uh, to this end url so the first thing I am going to add is the API key. And also only having the API key won't help us search a movie because we have to enter a name of a movie, right? Let's call it Curry. And that's it. Go to next. Okay, we have to give another name. Um, I'm gonna call it select movie. Okay, let's test it out. So I was telling you guys to write down your API key and now this is a time to insert the key. And the query, it just search any name. Um, let's do 
doctor test it out. The code 200 means is successfully run and uh, the system can access to this database without any problem. So that's good. You can also try a different query, say, um, let's do sky. So it also works. That's good. Let's keep it and go to next. All right, this part I think is really important because if you noticed, um, there's going to be ID and if you don't pay attention to this ID, you may get confused later on. What I like to do is uh, to differentiate from the integration layer and the data layer just by changing the class name. Let's do, uh, because this is a connector, let's do connector. Connector name, also do movie connector. Manually change that. Okay, so now our app is movie API, that's correct. But our rule set, we didn't update that. Our rule set, I want it to be movie connector okay and the data data layer just to simplify it i'm going to call it movie data that makes more sense um, data page name movie data and the rule set let's also do movie data Go ahead, create it. Okay, when it's done, I recommend you guys to take a screenshot of this page because Later on, it's going to get a little bit confused of, you know, which class are we referring to, which rule set are we talking about, and what's the data page name. So let's take a screenshot and uh, done. As you can see, configuring a connector is not too bad. It's relatively simple, but the hard part is to how do you transfer transfer the data from that data page to another place i'm sure you guys have already heard this a um, hundred times that um, only data page or activity can invoke a connector what does that mean well let's take a look let's go to our records and find the data page. We have the data page D movie connector. That's the data page that invoke our REST connector. So under the data sources, you see um, we have this REST connector and um, if you take a look over here, it has already automatically configured everything for us. Let's go ahead and open that up. So we're, we're getting data from that movie database and we're copying it to this data page and you can see all the results we copied the data the vote count video title release date everything all the information 
we have copied to this data page, the movie connector. Now, our next step is to create a data page list that contains all the results. Why do we need a data page list? Because um, if you remember earlier, when I search a query, it populates a list of movie info that's related to the keyword I put in the query. There's more than one movie called Doctor. There's multiple movies about it. So that's why we are going to create a data page list. It is also important to know where this data page list should locate. If you don't know, you can go to your app explorer. Instead of going to the work layer, we want it to go to the data layer. And you can see we have the movie data and the movie data result. The result is actually here. So all the results is under the property, the results. And since we have all the data here, let's go ahead, create a data page list under this class. Okay, let's do select movie list. And make sure it's the right class and the rule set about a rule set um, I said uh, take a look a uh, screenshot the rule set is actually should be under the movie data rule set and I named it movie data hmm. And change the structure to list. The data source, we already have the connector. The, this, the purpose of this data page list is to copy data from the movie connector to this page list. So we need a data transform to do that. Let's call it get results. And go ahead, create a get result. The good thing about creating from here instead of you know go to the create um, data transform is that if you do it here, you will automatically apply to the correct class code pega list. Let's go ahead, open it. So knowing that we are we are going to copy data from the D movie connector, it really helps us to figure out what to put in this data transform. Because this is from a different class, the first thing first we need to um, we need to explicitly identify which page and what is the class that this page belongs to. If you go back, you see the class is go go data movie data let's copy it and do the movie connector when we were configuring the connector we added the API key and a query in order to help us to search a movie. That's why under this parameter, we have to add this two thing too. API key, make it required so we won't forget. And we also need a query. Now under definition, this is the hard part. We wanted to copy all the result, so we're not just setting one property value. 
Let's do a pen too. And we want to do a pen to each page in. The source, of course, is the D movie connector. And we want the results. Now we have to specify what result we want to extract from the movie connector data page. How do we do that? Well, we know that we are going to pass in API key, right? And this API key must be the same as our parameter API key. After we have this API key, we also have to give a name about the movie. So that is our query. And we're going to insert our parameter query. Where are we appending to? The target is our primary. And uh, all because it's a um, as a whole list, we are going to append it to PX results. So if you are doing the same thing as uh, following along, this will not change. But depending on how you named your API key and your parameter, this part could be a little bit different. Also, when I first tried to connect it, I um, accidentally put this in a capital R. It would not work. It did not like it. I thought it should be lined up the same as this one, the results. But let's go back. In this data page, you can see clearly is a result with a lower case. And we want to make sure this is the same as what we see before. Let's go ahead and save it. Okay, now we have our data transform get results. When we try to save it, it's probably going to throw an error. Well, it didn't. But we're going to run into some issue later. And I can show you what I mean by that. Now, all the results has been copy and paste it to our select movie list. How do we how do we present those result to our user? Because user can view all the info in a section. So we're going to create a section rule. Still under the result and create a section. Call it movie result UI. And this is the right class. We want it to put it under results because all the results is under Google data, movie data, and results. Let's convert it to a full section editor. Submit. Now you just need to drop any properties that you want it to show up here. We definitely want the title. And let's see what else. Uh, we probably don't need that. The overview looks good. And the release date, maybe.
Also, I wanted to see the average vote. Okay, that is that. That's just saying that all this information, we just need to grab the title, overview, release date, and uh, average vote. Now you may wonder, we have title here. We're supposed to have the user to enter info into this title area, right? But we haven't have this property yet for users to uh, to have this input. So we have to go back to our case type and create that property. Um, let's call a search a movie. Actually, let's do search movies. Configure the view. Um, there are two parameters. One is the API key. And the other one is the query, you know, the movie name. Save it because we don't want our user to know the API key or have them manually enter the API key every time they need to search a movie. So that's why we have to use this py default data transform to just um, secure our API key and uh, decrease user's input. Okay, now let's go to our work class. PY default, we are going to set API key equal to your API key. Let's save it. Having the result under the movie result UI is not good enough because as you can see the class belongs to the data class not the work class which means we will have to create a user section under the work class i'm gonna go ahead and call it select movie case section and open it since it's going to return a repeatedly list of results so we wanted to have this repeating dynamic layout. And we have to specify the source.
the source is not going to be a property, it's actually going to be the data page. And uh, if you remembered, we have this data transform to get all the results copied from the connector data page to this select movie list data page. There we go. And here's the problem. We're supposed to have two parameters, the API key and a query. How come it doesn't automatically populate that property for us to enter info? Well, if you go back to our data page list, I've, I thought this was thrown an error. I thought Pega would figure out we haven't done anything to the parameter yet, but it didn't. Even though it didn't, we still have to enter the parameter for the API key and a query. That's how Pega knows what's the input and how to find the output based on the input. So what we need to do is to create another parameter, API key, and also we need the movie name, let's call it Curie. Go back to your definition, and now you can put here. Okay, let's try this again. See, now it's asking for the parameter value and the query. And we already know that the API key is going to be some default and we use the py default data transform to copy the info and there we go. That looks good. This is our source. Our source still haven't had, doesn't have anything yet because you need to um, specify what like what's the thing under this class you wanted to present to your user because all the results is stored under the data and we have to go to that class and find the user face interface that we just created let's just drag and drop as you can see here we have successfully put the the get result um, user interface under our work case we want this to be read only so every time the user give an input the user is going to see all the results and uh, um, let's do Okay, so under the presentation, you can select from auto to read only, always read only. And save that. Once you've done that, you may notice when a user create a case, there isn't any place that user can, you know, can give an input. Those are just read only. So we need to create another area for user input. And uh, let's do data capture, make this property related to movie name. I 
I hope you realize the importance of having that py default. If we didn't have that, we will have to create another property here and name it API key and have the user to enter the API key every time he's doing a research. So that's not good. But since we have this data py default data transform, we can just use the movie name and have the user to search a movie by typing any random name. Now let's take a look what the user will actually see when they opening a case. Okay, so this is not something we want the user to see. What you can do is to go to your case type and go to setting. Um, under the behavior, let's skip create a view when user create a new, view, new case. Let's do that. Save and run. This is still not working and uh, I think I know why. It is because even though we have this section ready, but the user, what users see is actually not the section we just created. And let's debug it together. So I want to see which section is this. It looks like this section name is called select a movie and our and our section should be select movie case. So how do we how do we switch to select movie case? We don't want to use this default select a movie. Here's what we can do. We go back to our case type and uh, under the workflow, you want to open the process. Okay, find this connector. This is the flow action. And instead of using the select a movie section, we want it to use the one we created, select movie case. Now we can save it and uh, create a new case. As you can see, this is the user interface that whoever log in will, will see. And movie name, let's do, um, uh, power. Well, it doesn't do anything after we type in. Why doesn't it do anything? We can open the clipboard and see if anything's wrong. First thing, I wanted to check my connector and see if my connector has been invoked or not. Okay, I see my connector is here. So let's see um, parameter results. Does it have any results? No, it doesn't. Looks like it only put, the, looks like it only has the API key in a parameter. It doesn't, it didn't take my query name as the parameter and that's why what's causing the issue a common mistake that is uh, when we are configuring the section where is my section we 
it's often it's common to forget that we have to refresh the page so whenever we give a name of this movie property we have to refresh the section now let's save it in a run blue okay so now it's refreshing okay that's exactly why it didn't populate at the first time because the page hasn't been refreshed that's why the parameter hasn't been taken but now since we add this refresh strategy it works and you can see all the movies that contains the keyword blue so this is it this is exactly how you connect your Pagat system to an external data source I hope you found this video useful and um, hopefully it kind of explained what are the connectors like how to configure data page list and how to do the data transform as well as how to configure the user section so thank you guys for watching this video if you have any any questions you can leave a comment down below and uh, i will see you guys next time